Hello, everybody, and welcome back. So by now, you should have already listened to part one and part two of the Musical Elements videos. If you haven't done that, then stop and go back and listen to them again or make sure that you get through them. We are in our Musical Elements lesson, and we are all the way up to this part of our Cornell notes. So when you turn in your assignment for this week, we're going to start right here on this pink page, page five, Cornell notes at the bottom, and that's where we're going to begin with those notes. So let's go ahead and get back to the lecture. We were just talking about timbre, and we listened to the Harry Potter song with the Celeste. So now let's talk about active listening. This is the most important part of what we do. We don't just know these terms. We want to be able to apply them to listening to music. So let's talk about what we want to do when we're active listening. The first thing we want to do is to eliminate distractions. So it's really easy, especially these days, to have music as a background. But when we are in music class, we want to use, move music to the forefront. In fact, my brain is so keyed in on active listening that it actually makes it hard for me to just listen to music for fun sometimes. Because if I'm hanging out with friends and we're listening to music, sometimes my brain wants to think about the music more than it wants to think about the conversation. So I actually have to be really careful. Now, you're not at risk of that unless you make it your entire career like I did. But making sure that when we're listening to music for class, you're eliminating distractions and listening very closely and you want to take away background noise. Sometimes you might want to like close your eyes to focus on the music. All right. That brings us to our next one, which is focus on the music. So you want to make sure that your phone is down, your um, headphones are on if you listen to, close your eyes and you are focused on the music and you're listening deep into the music, not just listening to the surface level, but you want to listen to all of those elements. It also might help you to listen to something multiple times. You're going to catch things on the second, third, and fourth listen. Think about those songs you have memorized. You didn't memorize them the first time you heard them, but they grew on you and you they became very familiar, even to the point where you can hum the background music because it becomes really, really famous to you. So really grasp the nuance of the music and the intricacies. Each listening session may show you some details that you didn't know that you could see before. So um, work through that. And then we want to identify those musical elements. So paying attention to the melody, the rhythm, the harmony, the texture, the dy dynamics, and the timbre to try and identify and describe each element and how they interact with each other. We've been doing this so much all year long that you probably feel like this is second nature, but I want you to go back to basics. And I want you to think when I listen to music, Am I listening for those pieces? Sometimes I'm not. And that's why we're reviewing these concepts because sometimes we have to remind ourselves to listen fully to the texture or fully to the timbre. Um, so if you're a guitar player, for example, you might be drawn to the guitar part. If you're a drummer, you may be drawn to the drummer. If you're a singer, you might be drawn to the singer. But you need to be able to listen to the guitar, the drums, and the singer in order to listen deeply, no matter what it is the instrument that you like the most or you prefer. Talking about the emotional impact of the music. So we want to reflect on the emotional impact of music and how it makes us feel. Pay attention to the changes in mood. Pay attention to the expression. Consider how it contributes. How is it making you feel? This is so important. This is why music exists. It, it exists to facilitate human emotion and expression. So the most important part about music is what it makes you feel. Yes, I want you to talk about all of the elements of music, but how it makes you feel is the most important part. When you're listening to music, you should be taking notes on it. Maybe the first time you listen, you just enjoy it. And then the second time you go through it, you start identifying instruments that you hear. Oh, I hear drums. Jot that down. Oh, I really like this rhythm because it's very upbeat, or I like this slow rhythm or sinister. And you start coming up with adjectives to describe how that music makes you feel using those musical terms and elements. The dynamics are very quiet and then very loud, so it's very startling. So that can be something or, oh, the, the celesta sounded very soothing and comforting to me. Why? Why did it do that? So take notes. And then discussing it with others. 
you probably have someone in your house who considers himself a music lover. We are all music lovers. We are designed to love music as human beings. People who don't love music just haven't found the music that they love yet. I truly believe that. And the reason why I believe that is because there's no culture on earth that doesn't have music in it. Not one, not one culture. So if you have someone in your home who doesn't like music, these are great playlists because they have a big wide variety of music. And maybe if you can help them to learn to listen deeply, they can appreciate it. Here's an example for me. I would have told you that I don't really like heavy metal music or screaming music. The reason why I don't like it personally is because I think about, I'm a singer and I think about the way their voice sounds and I think about how much it would hurt to sing like that and how scratchy my voice would feel. And so I used to not like that music because it made me uncomfortable, but I wanted to challenge myself. Is it my favorite kind of music? No, but I can listen and appreciate the drums and the guitar. I can appreciate the vocal distortions that are going on, even though they're not something that I would agree with is healthy to do for my voice. So you can find something to appreciate about music, even if you don't um, necessarily love that style of music. Some people don't like country music, but if you don't like it, it's better to know why rather than be like, ugh, I don't like it, it's stupid. Think about what you don't like about it. Do you prefer music where the singers are um, maybe singing with different vowel shapes? Do you dislike the story element? Do you dislike the lyrics? Do you dislike the types of instruments played, the type of steel guitar, for example? Figure out what it is that you like or don't like about it, and then be able to defend your answer with that. There are certain parts of jazz that I'm sure some of you really enjoyed and some of you didn't, but understanding what you don't like and why you don't like it is just as important as understanding why you do like what you like. So talk to people in your life about the music and enjoy that together. All right. We're going to talk about writing our analysis. So we've been working on this all year, but I think that every single person can improve. And so for the rest of the year, we're going to be working on these um, seven components for analyzing a piece of music, and then we're going to do reflections on them. So it's really important that we try our very, very best. So we have to start with a clear focus. When you're writing your um, analysis, you want to start off with a topic sentence. What are you talking about? Just like you do in English, writing a topic sentence is important. Then you're going to address each component. These can be a, a sentence or two. The melody of this piece was memorable because, or the melody of this piece was fun and interesting, or the melody of this piece sounded like this. It was fast. It was slow. You use musical terminology. You can use dynamics. You can use these with together. Melody includes rhythm. Rhythm sometimes includes melody. They don't have to, but they can. Harmony, as you know, includes more than one sound going at the same time. You could talk about texture, dynamics, timbre, but you want to hit on each one of these. All right. Every single song has this at play and you don't have to think about it necessarily as individuals, but they can work together. And the Hall of the Mountain King is the perfect example of that. The one we listened to with the line writer, because the rhythm and the melody and the, and the, um, the dynamics all worked together to create that. And you can talk about that if that's what's happening in the song. Then you want to provide detailed analysis. So if you're going to make a statement about the melody, then you need to be able to back it up with evidence, just like you do in science when you're doing your CERs, just like in English when you're appealing your paragraphs. You need to back it up with evidence. So you're going to describe each component's characteristic and impact. And you're going to talk about what it sounds like and why you think that it sounds like that. Then you're going to use descriptive language. Adjectives are your friend when you're doing musical analysis, and you can also include feeling words in there. Like I said before, oh, well, it went from very soft to very loud, so it was startling, or it went from loud, but then it grew quieter and quieter and quieter, and it was very soothing, and it made me feel like I wanted to sleep, that kind of thing, all right? We also want to provide examples. So if you want to talk about in the chorus, the artists sing louder. I talked about no doubt earlier. Um, no doubt 
um, sings Don't Speak with a very loud chorus and the dynamics are very loud and there's um, the texture thickens with drums, whereas earlier there's less use of drums. That's a way to incorporate your musical vocabulary and using descriptive language to describe. Then you're providing, ex uh, th that's an example. That's how you provide example. Then you want to connect those components. We talked about this a little bit, but if those components are working together, like in the Hall of the Mountain King uses texture to create dynamics. It uses a big texture to create dynamics. That is something that you can do to draw a connection. And then in the end, you want to conclude with a reflection. So you're going to summarize the effect and overall perception. How does it make you feel? You're going to use this model to write some sentences. So what I've got here is some notes on this, and then we're going to choose any song from the playlist that you already created. So you're going to choose your song, and then you're going to, um, right here it says choose a school appropriate song. I gave you a whole playlist of songs. So choose one from this playlist, maybe one that you liked that we touched on, or maybe one you want to go deeper into, um, or one that we didn't touch at all, but choose something from this playlist. And then we're going to go ahead and, and I'll, you're just going to listen maybe a couple of times. This is where you're going to jot down notes. This is not where you write your paragraph, all right? We're just going to jot down some notes, all right? Then you're going to go through each section of this song and talk about what does this tune remind you? How does it make you feel? Can you hum or sing along? You're going to write your analysis in these slides. Take your time. Once you have all of your notes organized from these two pages, that's when you're going to write your final paragraph. And remember, it needs to include a clear focus and a topic sentence. Each component needs to be addressed. You need to provide detailed analysis, use descriptive language, have examples, connect those elements together, and then conclude with a reflection of how this song makes you feel. This is a big assignment. This is not one or two sentences. You must address all the components of these uh, preparatory things within this paragraph, and it must follow this analytical example. So if you want to pause this and maybe take a screenshot of it so that you feel ready to go to write your analysis, you may. You also will be taking notes on this in your Cuomo notes, so you'll have that information right here once you fill in those um, once you fill in those notes. Okie doke. So here is what not to do. We're gonna review, we're gonna review a song badly. So here's terrible. Abba's song is good. It has nice singing and cool beats. I like the music and it makes me feel happy. This song is about music and it's fun to listen to. I like it a lot. Now, this is a nice sentiment, but this is not how we want to write our paragraphs. Why? What's wrong with this? Well, number one, it's vague and it's unspecific. Number two, do you see melody? Do you see timbre? Do you see dynamic mentioned? It doesn't cover all of those elements. It does not use musical terminology and there's not great grammar. In addition to that, it's pretty repetitive. I like it. The song is fun. It's good. It's nice. These are not strong adjectives. You want to use adjectives that describe this song might have a cool beat, but what's cool about the beat? What instruments do you hear? Do you hear glissandos on the piano? And if you don't know the word, that's okay, but just write what it sounds like. Here's an example of a good paragraph. Abba's Thank You for the Music celebrates the power and joy of music itself. There's my topic sentence. The song's melody is catchy and infectious with singable hooks that linger in the minds long after the song has ended. While it's driving rhythm, I'm showing driving, driving means it's moving things forward, propels the song forward with its upbeat tempo and harmony, which adds richness to the sound. So harmony adds richness. This texture is, and the texture is multi-layered and includes multiple voices, multiple singers, piano, guitar, strings, and synthesizer. So I named all of the instruments I could hear. The dynamics of the song add to its emotional impact, starting quietly and builds tension and excitement throughout. So it starts quiet and it gets louder, all right? 
The warm and inviting timbre of ABBA's voices and instrumentation is instantly recognizable, adding to the song's charm. So I talked about how it uses the voices and instruments and it's charming in that sound. Now I have a conclusion. Thank you for the music is a celebration of the power of music to bring joy, comfort, and inspiration to our lives and left me uplifted and grateful for the gift of music and its profound impact on our emotions and experiences. This is an example of a good paragraph. Now let's compare this with the example we looked at before. ABBA's song is good. It has nice singing and cool beats. I like the music and it makes me feel happy. The song is about music and it's fun to listen to. I like it a lot. Poor grammar, not specific. This talked about every piece. So this is what an A plus paragraph would look like. It also needs to make sense. Don't just use buzzwords. Don't just say the beat is infectious. Sometimes beats aren't infectious. Sometimes they're slow building. Sometimes the beat is hard to follow. You want to talk about the, what you hear, okay? So now let's revisit our question. All right, we're back. We're here now. So we finished our paragraph and we have our last reflection. So our first question when we started this was what makes a piece of group music great? Hopefully you can go back and look at your answer from the beginning, which was in the beginning, you wrote it up here. I hope that what you have to say changes between this slide and this slide, because in this slide, you now have more tools to help you understand what makes a piece of music great. So I'm going to be looking when I'm grading this for the difference in this first paragraph where you did it before we did the lesson and then your feelings after the lesson. So that's the rest of your lesson for this week. We're going to continue to work on active listening next week as we finish the school year strong talking about active listening. Now, if for some reason the sound on any of these songs is distorted, it is available for you in the playlist and we're going to link it in the modules so that you have it ready to go and we are going to give you the opportunity to listen to it. You need to choose... For this, you need to choose one of the songs from the playlist. And next week, we're going to have even more things that will help you to do better. So hope that explains it to you. I hope you enjoyed listening to some of this music and you can dive deeper into some more music later. Have a great rest of your week and make sure that you turn in all of these Google slides in order. You're going to get three grades for them. So you'll you'll get, that'll be broken up into three chunks. So filling out the whole slide is going to be used for three grades. Make sure you turn them in as you go so that they're there for the entire thing. I hope you enjoyed this assignment and I will see you in the next video.